I know all these 90s songs. It's 90s, yeah? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <sighs> okay, all right. I'm going to move swiftly on before I have a fucking aneurysm. <laughs> We like to discuss all things Xbox achievements and getting a reviewer to deign us with his presence. This week, we increased our revenue share, grind till it hurt, and put our gamer scores on our CVs. But first, here's the song of the week. Boost a little bit. Boost a little bit of Far Cry 2. Boost a little bit. I boost a little bit of Gears of War 2. There's just so much that we need to play, so join my game before it goes away. I boost a little bit, I boost a little bit of Ghost Recon. So boost a little bit, give a bit of Arcane and Lynch as well. Here I am with my tired eyes A boosting on until I die Oh, boost it And this is the bit where the saxophone comes in I'm going to guess just a little bit Okay, alright all right. But I have got no it. idea Okay, so that that is the song uh, Anyone? Anyone in the chat? Any ideas? It's a nice, easy one. It's a classic. Uh, I've got two people guessing uh, baked beans. Uh, no, it is not baked beans. <laughs> uh, thank you, Matt, Matt iPad Eye and, uh, and Montana. Um, it, uh, the, the song was uh, Give a Little Bit, yes, yep. uh, by Super Tramp. Might have heard of them. Pretty yep. good band. Uh, I know. Look, I, I know the song. I just don't know. Like, I know all these 90s songs. It's 90s, yeah? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going to move swiftly on before I have a fucking aneurysm. Jeez, I don't even know why I do this show. Uh, all right, let's get into the housekeeping. Uh, if you want to join in with this uh, this absolute fucking clusterfuck of a show, uh, you can message us on Discord. Discord.io slash realgamerscore is the place to be to talk about the show, to talk about video games, uh, share memes, get in- involved with our challenges and our uh, competitions, uh, along with uh, some exclusive stuff that we have for Patreons. Uh, if you don't know what Discord is, it's basically a big chat room um, that's kind of been, you know, this is what we use to, to do the show and, and also um, where we spend most of our time. Um, and it's really the best place to communicate with both us and our community. Uh, and so also speaking of Patreon, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash realgamerscore. So Patreon's a place where you can give us some cold hard cash so we can do our uh, uh, bits and pieces. Um for audio equipment, run competitions, pay for server costs. Uh, We really appreciate all of our Patreons. And you also go in the draw to win an ID of Xbox game of your choice each month. Uh, So we'll be drawing the the winner for that uh, in a couple weeks for next month. Uh, And so that also leads us on to everyone's favorite, the Real Gamer Score Word Challenge. The most organized challenge on earth, always ready to go, always got clues ready. The gifts are always ready and all set up. Isn't that right, Chin Doctor? He's not fucking listening to this. Uh, so it, only, we, it only took a few baseball bats this time, and now yeah, exactly, we, exactly. We had to have half the community threatening him, but he finally got around to updating the bot. Uh, so if oh. you don't know, the real game score word challenge is a uh, we have a channel in our Discord called Word Challenge where you have to guess the title of a video game uh, based on some clues that we give out each week or roughly each week, uh, and each clue that we give uh, increases the prize pool by ten dollars. So uh, last week we gave out the clue it was a non backers compatible game. Uh, and we've had a few guesses, but nothing so far. No, uh, no winners so far. Uh, so the the next clue that is given is that it is an old school, new style game. Again, what does that mean? Only Kirby knows. But uh, start maybe, um, I don't know, what, what do you think, Cameron? Like, what, what do you, Where do you think this is going? I'm going to say 360 generation, but it could... Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if this is... If this is like a maybe like a remake, or is he talking about like a like an indie game that like kind of like looks old but has like an old style art style I, or something along those lines? I was thinking along the lines of old arcade 
that's been remade into a 360 game, but I could be totally yep. off. I could see that. I could see that. All right. Well, uh, I guess uh, time will tell. I'm sure Jay Black is, is frothing in the mouth already with guesses uh, that he'll be putting in the chat. So that jackpots it up to 20 bucks. Uh, and also, like I mentioned last week, a uh, thank you to Hawkeye Barry. He's also thrown in a bit of a pot sweetener uh, with a free code for Borderlands 3 uh, Complete or Ultimate Edition, uh, which has all the current DLC. Um, I'm, lying, I'm lying that code up for myself. So if I win this, I'll, I'll, I'll give the money back to the community, but I'm keeping that code. Um, so I'm going to start putting some guesses in as well. But uh, with that... that code's exactly going on a shared account between us, isn't it? Yeah, oh, 100%. I'll put it on the <laughs> review account. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and so with that all that housekeeping out of the way uh, let's move into uh, the uh, main topic of discussion which is our guest here uh, Games of Dane Dane uh, how you doing mate? I'm doing alright not too bad thank you um, so Cameron you've, 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 you've uh, organised some, some questions for Dane here to sort of give him the uh, give him the, the once over what have you uh, what do you got? alright so I guess from the very start who are you? <laughs> it's probably a good place to start yeah who are you uh, what are you doing my, here? Uh, <laughs> my real identity will be uh concealed to protect my family <laughs> and those immediately close to me of course fair fair that's probably safe <laughs> uh i'm just your typical 30 year old full-time working father or two that puts in more hours gaming than i do working how i should be I feel that i should be i uh <laughs> Cut out sleep and uh, maximize that gamer score. Pump out reviews and uh, have a damn good time doing so. Fantastic. I mean, that's, I mean, it sounds like you're living the dream there, mate. I, I like to think so. <laughs> so I guess from that, I've done a little bit of snooping on your Twitter. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vanity project, my Twitter. It's, uh, it's all me, me, me. Oh, that's, yeah, that's you know, you got to have the loudest voice in the room. Go to, go to South yeah. remote, you know? Yeah, so, I, I, I'm interested um, pretty much just because you're, you list yourself as the official quotation marks priest slash community <laughs> manager <laughs> consultant for DCF Studios. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, being the Australian reviewer for yourself, VG4G Hub, One More Game AU, and Chivo Guides. Correct. Right. I guess from that, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about those roles and what's typical you for you on like your, I guess, every day. So the official quotation mark priest title <laughs> for the <laughs> DCF situation. That's a loving label afforded to me by CEO and founder Andre Amorim. Yep. He's referring to me as the priest, as their new community manager in whatnot for their titles, as I preach the good word about the DCFU, their shared gaming universe. So uh. as a preacher, I must somehow, according to him, be a priest. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure if it's a legitimate religion, the DCFU. Um, I mean, if, if it is, look, gaming's the preacher. only religion I follow. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm, I mean, like I would say that I technically am a reverend. So I mean, I was <laughs> I was ordained uh, for for a wedding once. So I mean, uh, I, like I'm, I look, I'm 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 a, I'm a man of I'm a man of spiritualism. I, I understand. Sometimes you just you know you got the, you got to get out the good book and the good game <laughs> and you know the good controller and the good the good headset. Uh, and the good book for me is now the Bible of the DCFU. So I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be pounding on doors asking if you've heard the good news. <laughs> um, so that, that's the uh, affectionate, loving background behind me referring to myself as a priest per why recommendation from the boss. <laughs> why don't we have door knockers handing out free codes? Like I'll sign I'm, up to a lot more. That. You know what? Like, I, yeah, I'll... <laughs> would just be a better world, wouldn't it? And it, really would. it really would. It really would. It's like no, I'm like no, I don't, I don't, you know, not going to heaven, not going to hell. I haven't got any any weird cryptic stuff. Just play this fucking video game, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something we should all look into. I think actually, I'd like to see more of it, any of it, in fact. Be very interesting to say the least. <laughs> it would, it would. <laughs> that'd be uh, that'd be welcomed into most homes, I would think. Compared to, we won't go into that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's the the priest background there. Yep. And my review situation is several years ago, I say several, probably like four, five years ago, 
I started writing reviews for a an Australian based Xbox News Facebook group called Xbox Gamer Dad. Yep. And it was the first time I was asked, "Do I want to write a review?" And I thought I'd give it a go, and I loved it. And for this yeah, four or five years since then, I've just gone nuts trying to adopt the philosophy: if you're going to buy it and play it, you may as well review it. That's a fair point. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, kind of how, how we ended up with this show, to be honest. <laughs> we just could, we just couldn't shut the fuck up about video games. We figured someone yeah. should probably listen to it. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, not always enough just to play it. You want to tell someone about it. Or 100%. Tell as many people who will listen. So, yeah, so I, I like to write as much as I can, as much as I can fit in. You know, some weeks or months are worse with a clustered leases in a week like the end of march was a nightmare it takes two uh k's in the wild masks um there was something else that was all march 26 so that was a nightmare yeah it's trying to get out before the end of financial year yeah that's right <laughs> so yeah my my reviews that i write go to my own site that i started last september i believe at gamesadane.com and i spread the joy of those reviews to those other groups oh, well, we'll definitely give you some some good plugs on the show for sure mm. so i guess with oh, that excellent. how do you fit your gaming reviews in especially being a father of two uh my so i i work mondays to thursdays um yeah. 10 hour days friday off and then saturday i work four hour days and every other sunday i do three hour days I, um, you typically work more than full time hours. Yep. But just get rid of that stupid sleep situation <laughs> to cram in as much, as much gaming as possible. You know, three or four hours sleep is what I live off. That's all. That's all you need, right? Uh, I, I think it's recommended you have more, <laughs> about double that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, come home from work, go into dad mode with the kids, a four year old and three year old son. And once they're both in bed by about you know, 7 o'clock, 7.30 at the latest, uh, Games of Dane comes out <laughs> and he goes to town on the Xbox <laughs> until about 2 in the morning, up at 6 for work. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, you had a question, Matt? Or? Oh, no, 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 you're good. Go, go okay, for it. Cool. Um, so I guess with that, I'm interested with the relationship with VG4. Is it BG4G Hub? G4G Hub, okay, yes. Okay, cool, yep. Uh, one more game and Chivo Guides, especially Chivo Guides, because we've talked about him a little bit before on the podcast. How would you describe, I guess, your professional relationship with those three? Uh, all, all very good. Uh, one more game is... One more game and Xbox Gamer Dad are uh, like sister projects. Okay, you know, Xbox yeah. Gamer Dad was first, focusing solely on Xbox News games. And one more game is focusing on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, a little bit of PC, but it's more multi platform coverage, whereas Xbox Gamer Dad is still just you know, Xbox. So those have been been with them yeah on and off for for five years yep going on um yeah that's that's good we've we've been to pax together um a couple years ago yep i think they've been to a x or two around my time together too so it's a pretty tight-knit small group of z dads doing the good deed, fighting the good fight, whether it's against the Covenant or, uh, (laughs) you know, whatever. But, yeah, good. um, Some page that's where I find the bulk of my news, and it's not just me trying to uh, give them a plug. They're they're all over it. They post, you know, trailers, uh, you know, all the latest releases, the tidbits, press releases, um, and then our reviews. Everyone collectively has a few reviews. Yeah, so they're all over everything. Everything Xbox. And one more game is everything Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. 
I personally, I'm interested myself, um, and I've put this question more so from me. I I'm actually doing a social media marketing course at the moment for myself because I want to break into the industry and become a community manager. What advice could you give for somebody who's looking to, I guess, break into the industry and, I guess, looking for that job where they can just speak about video games? I think, uh, unfortunately, you've read a little too much into my bio. (laughs) (laughs) I am by no means uh, an expert. Yeah. A professional uh, community manager or anything like that. <laughs> I've stumbled, luckily, uh, to that opportunity. And social media is something I'm still trying to figure out, figure out and understand myself. Um, with DCF, for instance, it just came about. Uh, this community management opportunity just came about. So jokingly, I saw a. Uh, they were searching for a community manager and digital marketing consultant. I jokingly applied as Games of Dane um, as to why I would be perfect for the job. (laughs) And uh, that joke turned into, you know, a deeper, longer conversation with Andre and turned into an actual opportunity because I, it's something I genuinely interested in, but I, I was not... 100% 100% serious with my, my application. I'm also done it to uh, give them a laugh while they were looking through the applicants. And I thought, they're Brazilian-based. Here's an application from Australia. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I've always... I've had a good relationship with Andre, so that, that certainly didn't hurt my chances. Sure. Yeah. So so, so what, what I'm gathering from this, Dane, is that, is that you basically need to have a, a... You know, be funny. So I think I think Cameron should out of luck, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, 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 have, you know, though, I have put hall of fame on a few of my resume applications. Of course you fucking <laughs> have. Why and am it, I not surprised? It, it makes, Wait, why have you, it makes for a very interesting conversation when you go to the interview. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. There's definitely a good talking point and it's very memorable. I'll give you mm. that. Hey, what hall of fame? I've, I've just noticed the, uh, the writing on your, so, I'd wear it all the time too. If I had one, what the hell did you get? <laughs> so I'm, um, I'm hall of fame for game pass for Australia. And this um, gentleman below me is uh, Hall of Fame for New Zealand for both achievements and Gamer Score We're over the Xbox One generation. Gamer Score, are we talking for Xbox One there? Eh? Yeah, so I um I just hit my one point six million this week. So I've been and I've been I've been doing this for a few years. Um, you know, I, I, I don't like to toot my horn too much. I mean, like you know, I, I do it in kind of a joking way, but um, yeah, it has it's been. It's been a, a big, long project, but uh, yeah, I got my, uh, uh, you know, just because, you know, Xbox always likes to have a bit of a laugh at my expense, they sent me uh, a hoodie that didn't fit, Beautiful. Uh, um, an Xbox that didn't, a Series X that didn't work, Excellent. Uh, and a trophy that was misaligned. So, um, amazing. <laughs> yeah, so. Did, you, did you get a, did you get a code for one month of, um, oh, of no, live? They, they, uh, no, they did, they, they, they did actually give me my code. Yes, they, they gave me 12 months of, of Xbox Live Ultimate and they gave me another 12 to as, a, as an apology, which is fair. Um, and they're supposed to be sending me a new trophy, which I'll, I will show off when it gets here and I'll compare it to the other one. Um, but yeah, so Cameron, Cameron and I have been doing this uh, game school thing for a long time. But, uh, but yeah, Cameron, Cameron is, uh, is proudly touting his... Uh, his uh, Look, I went, I went for a social media marketing um, slash administration job the other day. I find out next week, so I'm interested. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> if it works, it works. Yeah, hey, it doesn't, it doesn't. yeah, I mean, like I, I, I brought it up at my workplace too because it was it was right about when I got my job. I was like, absolutely, I because <laughs> I, I found out I found out my first like my first or second week. So yeah, exactly. Twenty whole bucks, as as Dino Bull has said, the uh, <laughs> the the misprint trophy will be a collector's item. Yes, I'm, I'm I've got it on the shelf. I, I'm yeah. absolutely. I'm gonna hold on to it. Um, I can, you know, that's that's four whole Radalaka games right there. So that's you know, that's 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 game score in the bank. It's quality game score in the bank right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's the best twenty minutes you'll spend. Oh Ugh. god, yeah. I, I, Those I are some had... long Radalaka games. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> had um had someone in one of our other communities talking about Radalaka games and how they're just going to do a bunch of them to boost their score up. So we basically started referring to those people as juices. Because <laughs> um, they're just, you know, they're, the, the testicles are shrinking, but the, the game score is improving. 
happy to admit that I'm a juicer then by that <laughs> analogy and I mean, that analogy only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very specifically. Very specifically. I mean, look, you know, like I'm like, so some, sometimes you just need that, that you need that, that, uh, that achievement boost right in the buttocks to just, just get, get, get you through the day. Yeah, two shots sometimes. Definitely. Two shots. I mean, yeah, like again, it's, yeah. you know, second it's, opinion it's, doesn't hurt. <laughs> so I guess from that, uh, I guess from Matt talking about his game of score, I noticed that you've got a personal goal for 1 million yourself. Yes. Do you want to talk us a little bit about that journey? So that sort of happened slowly. I got my first 360 in 2007. I think oh, they okay. came out 2006, was it? Uh, it November 2005, but I, I got mine 2007. I got mine 7th of the 7th of the 7th, so probably about the same time. So mine, mine must have been Christmas 2006 then. Okay, gotcha. Because I, did, I didn't do Xbox Live until the start of 2007, and my gamer tag, embarrassingly, is uh, Vanilla Face 07. I may have oh. watched a bit too much Borat. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! I mean, you know, that's that's not the worst. I mean, at least it uh, wasn't. You it's know, certainly not wrong. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, not 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 great. I mean, yeah, but it could have been. You know, XX kill Seth Roth 360 no scope. Yeah, yeah, like you know, well, I've, I've heard I've heard cringier ones at least. I've never been uh, never been about putting that X in my gamer score, <laughs> uh, my gamer tag. I'm not about that life switching no, numbers no. for letters and stuff like that. Absolutely. But, um, just put edge on the end of it and call it a day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it just the, I just slowly accumulated it without paying too much attention to it until um, probably. 2000, 2008, and I moved here from New Zealand. Uh, my brother and I had little to do when we first moved to Tasmania before I came to Wangaratta, yep. Victoria, um, and we started renting a lot of games from a blockbuster, I think it was, and I started, I think it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, tie in with the movie. Yep. Where I, where I sort of, I'd always been mindful of achievements and liked to to get them, but I wasn't too focused on getting all of them in a game until I played Ninja Turtles. I thought, game's really easy to unlock all these achievements. And then I had Fight Night Round 3, I think it was. And that yep. was like two hours or something. I was like, and these are easy. I just started, you know, looking on the internet and stuff for, for what games had quit, you know, Madden, uh, 06 or something NFL mm-hmm. 06 yep. again you Classic. could do it in like yeah. yeah and I started getting a bit of a taste for it for, uh, how, how long until a copy this... of Avatar ended up in your hands believe it or not that bad boy only made its way into my archives last year I believe oh wow that's what you never... held out for that one I'd never been able to find it for a reason that's the price. problem right it's, <laughs> it's a hard one to find wasn't paying 20 or 30 dollars for it on like eBay or something that's fair but point. uh was on one of the sa- I don't know if it's backwards compatible or maybe it's just on the 360. Uh, I believe it is back compat now. I think. Yeah, so yeah. it might have been when it became back compat. It was on sale for something stupid, and I thought, there we go. I'm going to grab that. Yeah, I enjoyed the the two and a half minutes that it took to get that. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been there. Yeah, so I sort of stumbled across it with Ninja Turtles and that Fight Night Round Three. And then I just started really paying attention to it, and whenever I'd buy a game or or rent a game, I'd try and maximise those sweet, sweet Gs. It was about five years ago I actually really started to give a shit. I met someone through, I digitally met through Xbox, at a higher gamer score than me, which I hadn't seen in my time. I think I was at like 300,000 at the time. This guy had like 450 or something. And we started having some friendly competitions. Started getting, you know, 10K months, 15K, 20K, 30K. And I started setting my own little goals, like 50K months, 60K months. Last (sighs) July, I'd done 140K month. Jesus Christ. It's still Last June, I think it was. It's still better than Matt's goal. Pretty much if you see somebody above him, he just decides to bust their kneecaps. Well, no, I mean, I mean, look, the the I, the problem with busting kneecaps is that usually leaves them bedridden with more time to play video games. 
So you really need to cut the internet connection or, in my case, remove them from my friends list so I don't have to look at them. Before. I made that mistake of, once I started adding people, uh, once I started really paying attention to people who had high gamer score and adding them to my friends list on Xbox, I got very uh, emotionally distraught when I started seeing, you know, that... 12, 13 month consecutive string of top of the leaderboard to getting eclipsed by you know, these guys that do this all day, every day. It's pretty demoralizing, isn't it? Where you think oh, you're all that 100%. and then you get cut down to size. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I'm, I'm, you know, top 40, top 50, somewhere around there. I don't know exactly, but like, even I'm like, you know, like I, I'm sitting at 1.6. I look over and I get to the top of the leaderboard and look at like Stallions and, and Pigmas Primes and things like that. And they, they're looking at like, you know, 2.5, getting towards 3 million. I'm like, I don't even know. Like, even if I had another 10 years, I would never catch them. Well, it's, it's hard yeah. when a Sony pony hits 100k in a month. Uh, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I mean, it is. It, yeah. I wish I'd paid attention to it from from day one from 2007 the number of games that are no longer you know some of them aren't supported Mm -hmm. the achievements are offline now servers are dead and stuff i wish i'd paid attention to gamer score from day zero i've got 1200 games in my my hard drives right now on my series x that are everything that's completed gets uninstalled yep so everything that's installed is yet to be maxed out it hurts me knowing that there's 1,200 games. If you translate that to gamer score, it hurts me thinking if I'd been chipping away at this for the entire time I've had them. Yeah, it should be double where I am at least. <laughs> I think everybody's so, got that one game or 100 games in their collection that they <laughs> have that regret yeah, so, for because the server's closed unexpectedly or something oh, just abso- has been broken. Absolutely. I can live with games that have unobtainables, though. They're... they're, they're Gamer score itself is more important to me than the hundred percent completion. Interesting, because because most people we speak to are the other way around. Like I'm definitely a completionist on my front. Like I'm I'm pushing up against ninety five percent completion. Um, so I've, I've got you know two hundred and fifteen started games that I haven't finished or I haven't completely finished. And I probably I've got a few more in the backlog that I haven't started yet. But I'm slowly working down the uh, slowly working down the um, the list. But like the, the, it's for me, it's the completions all the way. Like I, even if they gave me no gamer score, I'd still complete all the games. You know? Ah, uh, hell no! <laughs> like I, I draw the line. I'll play something and try to get as much as I can along the way. I'm not going to replay a 50 hour RPG on the hardest difficulty just for that last 30 Gs or something like that. Can fuck off. All right. Oh, I've, 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 I, I, make sure you don't play Infinite Undiscovery then, because there's, there's the achievement for beating the final boss on the hardest difficulty is a single point. It is. It's, so it's, so it's, it's slap take, in the take, face. Take in the piss. I've got two questions yeah. from that then. What's your relationship with zero G achievements? Out of my own curiosity. Yeah, I was just chatting about this on Twitter, and I wonder if you've seen that. <laughs> and that's inspired this question. Zero G achievements. A, the ultimate nut punch, I think. <laughs> there, it's the slap in the face for for the work that you put in. Yeah. You know, even if it's a something like a Radalaka or something, one of them wouldn't be as painful. Mm-hmm. You know, putting one in the you know ten hour plus game zero, especially when it's something like this is the one for unlocking all the cheap all the achievements, which normally never unlocks in games anyway, as True. we know. It's just adding salt to the wound when you get zero g for your effort me if i got to that point if it was one of those i would see i already have a thousand and say fuck the achievement i've got the g's <laughs> zero zero g's hurts i'll take a, a one g achievement which i hate over a zero any day i'll take an odd you know one three seven nine the achievement over zero any day yeah. at least it's something at least it's contributing the number that really means nothing that i dedicate my life to improving <laughs> i mean hey like we're, we're all we're all we're all on that same page i think i mean i, I it's uh it's it's for, for, for me it's like oh hey you know you've got the the completion numbers you've got the completion percentage you've got the ratio you've got true achievement score you've got gamer score they're just all completely pointless fucking numbers that we just spend way too much time on yeah we care about them for and then different ones too like the ta ratio like doesn't exist to me fair I, fair 
for me, it's not a real number. Like, not saying gamer score is, but I can go on my Xbox and see gamer score. Sure, sure. See my achievements. It's not a real Xbox number, in my opinion, personally. So I don't care. But mine will be trash. I don't know what it is, but it won't be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. going from that, what's more important, the game or the gamer score? That's sort of twofold for me. I go into. Games of Dane operates in two modes, right? I refer to myself in the third person because I love it. <laughs> Games of Dane in review mode doesn't care about the gamer score. I'm there for the game, the experience, to write yeah. about it. Sure. So if, I'm, if I'm playing something for fun, like something to hate on, I'm one of the probably two or three people in the world that still regularly play Anthem and Avengers for the fun of it, even though oh, okay. I've got all my achievements. So, so I, I, I had a feeling you were a masochist, but now I've had that confirmed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just thought I'd lay that out there early. I'll play stuff. If I'm playing something for the fun of it or for a review, I don't care about the... If I can get all the achievements in Gamer Score, awesome. If I'm playing a game to write about it, I don't care about the achievements. If I'm going on a tirade like I'm going to the next three months, get to that one million, I don't care how good the game is. I don't care if it works properly, if it's broken. As long as it gives me some gamer score, I don't care. So it's split for me. It depends what I'm doing. Am I playing for the the game and the experience and the review, or am I playing just to inflate that number? Well, work mode and fun mode, quote-unquote. Yeah, and the fun mode certainly doesn't get as much uh, action as he deserves. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. I certainly don't play what I want to play uh, for the majority of my playing time. I'm playing in work mode, so to speak, nonstop, either viewing or gamer score, which I call work because it's not particularly fun sometimes, as you sure. would know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I hope that answers the question. It sort of depends what I'm doing as to which is more important. Uh, we actually had another question here from uh, from Mad Eye Pad Eye, just saying, uh, "Do you ever skip cutscenes then to get through games quicker?" Right, I will never ever skip a cutscene in a game I am reviewing, game I am genuinely interested in, game I'm playing for fun. I've skipped probably every cutscene in every Rattlelacker game. <laughs> you know that that's where I'm going with that. I'll never skip a cutscene, sure. a story experience in particular whether that's for a review or for my own fun i don't i'm not a cutscene skipper unless i'm trying to get 140k in one month obviously i'm skipping everything i can yeah sure sure yeah (laughs) Yeah. extenuating circumstances yeah that's right but no i'm not a skipper Uh, and that's because my best mate that i grew up with in new zealand who uh, i still play co-op stuff with today online we accidentally skipped a cutscene in halo that explained the arrival of the flood <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that, that that minor plot point yeah that minor plot point and we were sitting there wondering what the fuck is all this stuff coming out of every orifice in this room like from then on never have i ever skipped a cutscene even though that was an accident i've never skipped one since yeah. <laughs> lesson learned Oh. Stories, stories, the most important part of a game for me, anyway. Yeah. So that, that was that was going to be my next question. Is that we, we've had debates on air with many people around like a story you... man. Good, yeah. Play. Me, me too. Me too. It's, ideally, obviously, we're going to have an amazing story, some gameplay, fun controls, you know, some visual sound and all that. But for me, if the story's great, I can live with a clunky gameplay. Yeah, story yeah. first for me, hundred percent. Bad, doesn't mean, my own heart. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm uh, in favour necessarily of these more interactive cinematic you know, thirty minutes of cutscene to ten minutes of gameplay ratio. I'm not saying that. I don't mind it, but story yeah, story first for me. All, all every day. Yep. So I see uh, in the chat skip all the outriders cutscenes. If there was a game <laughs> I wished I could have skipped all the cutscenes for it would be that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I've heard I've heard it's pretty yeah. uh pretty cringe. Yeah, and technically yes. there's you know, you could call them cutscenes for opening doors or jumping gaps. Oh. Outriders. Great. Yeah. If little Everything, I, everything I hear about this game pulls me one direction or the other. Like I've I've been some people love it and some people just can't fucking stand it. It was great for about an hour for me. Mm. You sort of you peak too early. Yeah. 
oh, played right. as the pyromancer and you are OP as, as shit. You're borderline invincible four or five missions into the game. Hmm. Just, I mean, yeah. That ride like... isn't for me. That's fair. Decent game, but certainly not for me. I won't be back. I got my thousand Gs. I will not be back unless they add more. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, yeah. We had a few questions from the community as well that I want to touch base on. So Dynable asked, do why do AAA games have the most boring tutorials? Uh, that's an interesting point. Why do they have the most boring tutorials? I honestly haven't put too much thought into it. I'm one of those, and I reckon you'll... I think at least one of you will relate to this, and I think I know which one. I'm a self-tutorial guy. First order of business when I load a game up, I'll press every motherfucker and see what he does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah, yeah. I don't need to be told what to do. I'll figure it out in the first few seconds and hope for the best. Yeah. I think they're the most boring because they try... I don't know if I would agree with they're the most boring uh, myself, but I think they may feel a little more boring because it's just taking a minute to break break the immersion for a second and tell you how to do something without it would be better to get you doing teaching you how to do something yeah. in a more meaningful way like instead of it being a completely separate sort of part of the story where it's here's the tutorial then here's the story like integrate it more integrate it into a, a scene or a sequence I think because they treat it as a separate thing it's merged with the uh, the narrative i think that would make more sense i'm just trying to think of games that do it well though because like the first thing that's jumping to mind for me is yakuza and the first bit of those games it's like 30 seconds of do a certain punching combo yeah and you can't just rush ahead i think that might be a little bit of a western versus eastern game design Uh, and also looking at like mass market appeal of games we we do forget that sometimes that as we play a lot of games and we play a lot of different genres that like not everyone who comes into a game is going to have a familiarity with the genres that they're playing right? yeah that's right and like and like and i would rather be taken by the hand and have the ex- mechanics explained to me rather than just you know have people getting let loose onto something i mean you know you're always going to run into the stuff like that that journalist playing cuphead but like <laughs> yes <laughs> but like you know most of the time that I find the tutorials, might, might, while not interesting, are usually they do their job for the most part. Yeah, they're, they're helpful. I, th- I think if they were integrated in a more interesting way, like you're saying, that's the way to do it. Instead yeah, of just sure. sort of stopping the action and saying, here's a quick little, this is how you tie your shoes. Tell me how to tie my shoes while I'm running or something. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, mix yeah. it up. Yeah. Make it a completely separate uh, aspect of it. Incorporate it. Make it interesting. No one likes them, so make them likable. Yeah, yeah exactly. My approach. I'm, I'm just trying to think of a really good one that's like caught me in the first few minutes. I can't think of anything off the top of my head now that's sort of amazing or terrible. It's it's I'm kind of, it's in my mind it's kind of like great video game music. It's part of part of it being great is that you don't notice it. Hmm. Like if it's if it's doing its job correctly, you you won't even be like, oh, that was a tutorial level, or like that was a. You know, like I got stopped every five minutes to read, uh, you know, a pop-up box around how to do a five-hit combo. Or you like just most of the time, you come across it later on and you just harm it automatically because it's so ingrained. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, a lot of questions have got. CJ has written: Are written reviews still relevant, and should sale price of a game factor into the review verdict? I think written reviews are relevant. Personally, there's two reasons I started with written and why i have stayed entirely with written personally i prefer to read something watch something seeing someone else's experience isn't quite the same for me as reading about their experience go into more detail about what they thought about it in text than they can by showing me the same thing i can see myself Mm -hmm. i find writings a little bit more uh, personal with someone actually thinks about a game instead of talking over footage that yeah is, is going to be the exact same for everyone but we're obviously as players all going to have slightly different experiences based on whether we like certain things or mm. or whether we're fans of the genre or the developers There's so many different things that might sway someone's opinion 
that you sort of, I think writing lets someone say more than what they can show. Mm. Um, they are kind of dated, admittedly. Like, everything's video. Obviously, in 2021, <laughs> written reviews do sort of stand out as something that's not necessarily the norm. Yeah, personally, yeah. I prefer reading someone's thoughts than seeing someone's... Yeah. I, yeah, I, I definitely understand that. I think that part of part of the pivot to video and like I so I, I work in marketing and so part of that pivot to video was a, a big push by Facebook in terms of advertising for yeah. outlets and a lot of that turned out to be bullshit anyway um it was very, very controversially but um but I think that part of it is that like reviews have become in a lot of ways less than informational and more about entertainment and I think that that's where that's where a lot of the video aspect has come into it um, cause I mean, I used to, you know, I used to write reviews for a small website, you know, back in my, my university days, you know, long ago. Uh, and that's, and sort of that stuff was all very much like, yeah, here's the score. Here's kind of what I thought about it. Here's kind of, you know, here's the good stuff. Here's the bad stuff. And it's kind of, you know, it kind of, it does what it says in the tin where it's like, you know, I didn't have to say, Hey, rate, rate, review, subscribe, hit that like button. And here's, you know, flashy animations yeah. and all this other bullshit that I have to do for if I wanted to put together a video production, right? You can, you can, you can, it's, it's more pure, I suppose. Yeah. It's more authentic, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. It's with video, like video is something I want to, want to get into. Time management's a nightmare for why I haven't gotten into video stuff yet. Yeah. Need to sort of, what I need is to get this bloody 1 million gamer score out of the way and <laughs> then I can free myself up to put time into other things. Um, yeah, video is something I want to do, but I think even if I do start doing video reviews, I'd still do the companion written one mm. uh, yeah. for for choice, which more than anything is what we want. Um, yeah, I agree. It's it's yeah. more authentic feeling reading what someone thought about a game. I believe. CJ also asks, other... "Do you just review games? Do you just review games for free codes?" Uh, majority, I reviewed exactly 100 games last year, oh, nice. and it would have been you know, 15, 20, maybe were codes. Right. I buy, buy everything to review everything. No one's asking yeah. me to I'll buy a game I don't want just to write a review for it. Okay. I, I don't know. It just adds to the. It's a new experience. That's one good thing about Gamer Score and writing reviews. I'm playing stuff I wouldn't normally play. Playing smaller indie games made by three people that otherwise I might not have looked twice at. Mm. Yeah. So, so no, I don't play for the free stuff. Um, I don't get a whole lot of free stuff. I don't expect a lot of free stuff, and don't. I'm I'm not in this to get stuff. Do it because I like writing about something I've played. Codes and stuff are awesome. I'm super appreciative of the opportunities I have had. I'm not not wanting to do this so I can get free stuff. That's <laughs> that's not what I'm here for. I like I said, probably twenty percent of the one hundred reviews I wrote last year were codes. Yeah. Everything else was just off my own back because I want to do it. Uh, and then just a follow up to CJ, just asking about uh, the price of video games. Does that factor into your reviewing process? It only, I don't. I don't think it should. A couple of reasons. I think if you're, if it's say a a Radalac, a thirty minute game, and it was forty dollars, then I would talk about the price. Mm. I don't think the price needs to be discussed unless it's something absurd. Right. Something is just does not fit the price tag. Then I would bring it up. Say so, where it's noticeable outside of norms, basically. Yeah, that's right. Like. I wouldn't play, say, Second Extinction. Uh, say, I don't know what that costs to buy, because in Game Pass, obviously, that's how most of us will be playing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but say it costs $60. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't mention that it costs $60 and whether that was a positive or a negative, unless I felt that game was only worth, like, $10 or something. Yeah. Right. I think the price should only really be a factor if it is, if it's... If it does not fit the like experience, if it's grossly, if it's grossly under length, yeah. really poor quality, 
But like a visual no if a visual novel was fifty dollars, I'd talk well, about it. I think uh, <laughs> going back to plantings from relevant. like fifty podcasters ago, it's like what it's a dollar equals one hour of value, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, it doesn't always doesn't, hold up. Doesn't always hold up exactly. I mean, that's again the, the and ex experiences are relative, and I think that's that's something that people need to understand about reviewers in general is that. It, you, it's impossible to have a non-biased review and people will get different things out of different lengths and different types of games and you kind of have to the reviews are a way to a lot to figure out what that person thinks and how you align with that whether you agree with it or not is kind of beside the point yeah, exactly yeah yes so price for me i i think it only really needs mentioning if it is just outlandish in comparison to the experience like I said, a, a visual novel that takes you know, 10 minutes with a skipping auto feature, if that was $50, to talk about it. If it's $10, even $20, I don't think it's worth it. It's discussing. Um, we had a couple other questions here. Yeah. Just, um... uh, so, Framehole, do the reviewer, yeah. sorry, do you think reviewers should disclose how much time and progress they've made in a game that they are reviewing? I do not see the benefit of that. I'm. But what's the question? Do do we think players that are reviewing provided codes should disclose the amount of time and progress they've made? I mean, I guess just in general, in terms of, uh, I, I guess it's a it's a question of, uh, and I, you, I put this in air quotes for our audio listeners, uh, trustworthiness of the reviewer. Uh, so, like, would you? Do you, do you complete every game you review, I guess, is, is the, the, the sort of yeah. the, what that boils down to? I at least complete the story, yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. Achievements, not definitely not. Sure. You know, if but... it's a little indie game. Otherwise, you, you can't... I won't write a review until I've at least finished the story, if it has yeah. one. Test it out the multiplayer if it's got it. Whether I enjoy the multiplayer or not. Like Outriders, for instance. Played the whole thing solo. Had to do a little bit of matchmaking to play with other people just to make sure the matchmaking wasn't rubbish or anything. And I didn't put my... Even though my review was pretty much written by the time I got to the expeditions mode, the end game, I, I had no interest in playing it. I was over the game by then, but played it. Played several, several missions alone and with players just to... I, I don't think should be writing about something you haven't actually played so in sure. that regard i understand the question um yeah but I, then I, I think I'm pretty much that's asked. subjective too though because mm. what i had with assassin's creed valhalla was i had a you know, particularly on facebook not so much on twitter uh, people rampaging that i had said the straight story in assassin's creed valhalla took me 35 hours to complete without skipping cutscenes or anything i just went straight story Always do it with assassins. Smash the story. Do everything later. Yep. People were saying, "Oh, it took me 70, 80 hours to get through the story." And tons of comments, dozens. You know, the thread went on to like a mm. hundred plus, where people saying, "There's no way you finish the story in thirty-five hours." I finished the story in thirty-five hours by playing just the story. Mm. It took you eighty, and then you tell me, "Oh, I was off looking for this horse, or <laughs> I was trying to get into this dungeon for thirty minutes." It, I didn't do any of that. Yeah, I think there's, the there's, 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 there's having a path and then there's mainlining, right? I mean, for review yeah, purposes, yeah, that's right. like, it, 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 there is a difference. And like, as you know, yeah, I think the thing other people don't realize about Achievement Hunters is that we have gotten very, very good about getting the most out of games very quickly. That's, that's yeah. the other thing too, is once you throw in the Achievement Hunting side of things, we can, not generalizing or saying, you know, that we're more experienced or whatnot, but we've played a lot more incredibly diverse range of genres types mm. uh we know what to be looking for we look at it, we look at lists before the games come out and stuff we go in knowing what we're looking for so we've already got an agenda other than just completing the story for instance with like assassin's creed i said the straight to straight story took 35 hours the whole game took me about 100 i think had a lot of trouble with the fish which people are still uh, experiencing <laughs> yep yeah so it took me 100 hours to get all the achievements but only 35 to do straight story and mm -hmm. i 35 is outlandish to someone when they say it took me 60 70 but they're off doing other shit i was just doing the mainline story missions so i think i think just me saying how long it took me to finish a game i do mention 
at the length in some reviews. I don't mention it in every review. If something's really short, it's sort of like the price. Hmm. If a game can be done in less than an hour or something, I'll say, this is only a one-hour game. This is a two-hour game. Yeah. I won't necessarily say it's a 10-hour game, it's a 12-hour game, but I'll say it's a 20, 30. Sort of if it's really short or really long, I don't really talk about that normal sort of standard 10 to 15-hour story experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I think time's, at times a little too hard to say how long it takes because of how you might play it differently to me. For instance, it's always, it's if that makes sense. Subjective. Yeah, I, th- I think... I think disclosing how much... T- I think, sure, we could say how much time we've put into a game. I don't know who it really benefits. I guess mm. I can I can see where the question's coming from, though, with the, the trustworthiness of, have you even finished the story before writing about it? Yeah. So I, I can understand that, but I don't think it should be an obligation sure. to, uh, yeah. to say how long I've spent um, playing anything, yeah. Uh, what else we got? Michael just, KV. Oh, uh, let's skip that one. I don't think no? it's relevant. Right, cool. um, uh, we've got we have one other question here from Matt. I just sort of a follow-up. I mean, I probably already know the answer to this, but um said, I find a lot of community reviewers only play review easier games. Do you look at how easy a game is before review? I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to say here, but... Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am a... What I love about writing reviews and especially being afforded opportunities here and there is, like I said before, playing stuff that I otherwise wouldn't play. I don't care. I don't favor genres. I don't discriminate against developers. I don't... Uh, people are thinking, you know, these guys have made bad games or whatever. I don't care. I'm going to play it. I'm going to go into it as open and expect to have a good time. Assuming the best case scenario, hoping for the best with every game I play. I don't, if you look through my reviews, like, sure, there's a bunch of these indie ones in there. You know, they might take an hour, might take two, three hours. But then you'll see, I'm always buying the It Takes Twos, the Assassin's Creeds, the, I don't care if it's AAA or indie. I'm, if I'm going to buy it, I'm going to review it. If something interests me, I'll see if I can get my hands on it. Buy it? No. Um quality of a game uh, not quality uh, I suppose easiness is the word in question isn't it I'm sure. not particularly bothered if a game looks easier or shorter um, I, I I go into a game hoping for the best and if it delivers it does, if it doesn't oh well, but I'll play everything every, every one man game, every triple A game, whatever it is I'll play it but I'm interested or not I'll give everything a go. Certainly doesn't impact how I select what I review because I review everything I buy. <laughs> it's pretty much my motto. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that, that that makes perfect sense. Yeah, so that's that's what I that's where I stand on that. Oh well, th- cool. th- thank you, thank you for uh, for playing twenty questions with us, mate. That was uh... <laughs> <That's> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 uh, it's it's great great to get your opinion on a lot of this stuff because it's you know we 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 you know we we sort of sit in a in a sort of quasi review sphere and that we do have an audience that we talk to about video games but it's really good to, to to talk to someone who actually has that sort of you know experience with the written stuff and actually you know as a in a slightly more structured fashion um and it's yeah. it really yeah really great to hear hear your opinions on a lot of that stuff awesome well, i hope my answers satisfied the hunger of the question givers <laughs> oh, i mean they're never satisfied but you know uh, I, I, so, uh, um, so i'm just having a, some quick video issues so i'm just gonna quickly try and fix it okay yeah cameron just just um just keep an eye on that we'll um we'll just move on uh to the news so uh we'll just go we'll, we'll just fly through these a little quickly it's kind of a little couple of bits and pieces that we've we've seen over the last week all right cool it should be working now cool Okay, cool. Um, so we've had uh, Microsoft have reported that their gaming revenue is up fifty percent thanks to the Xbox Series X and S, the, with the demand being so high for them, and for Xbox Game Pass. Um, it's not really much to talk about there, um, outside of kind of that. You know, their, their hardware is seeing big growth. I mean, two hundred and thirty-two percent for the quarter, which I guess makes sense because they, you know, they have a a console out that people want. That people want, and, and there's a, not a strong that. demand. There's a very strong demand and very short supply. <coughs> um, 
and they, yeah, apparently the console shortage could last at least until June. Yeah. Which I think is probably even probably being a bit um, optimistic on that front, considering what I've been hearing. From what I've seen, too, PS5 is starting to come back into stock quite regularly now, too. So oh, that's good. I'm just interested to see if they've caught up, but I haven't really seen much other than the retail front of it. Yeah, um, and then they just said that they're with their Game Pass. Uh, they've had 18 million reported Game Pass sub- subscribers uh, in back in January, uh, and now the people are. Turning on, turning to Xbox more than ever, quote unquote, saw record engagement this quarter led by strength on and off console. So, uh, do you think when? See, I, I use this, I use this term cautiously because not everybody's back at it. Like, there's lots of parts of the world that's still very much getting struck by COVID. But do you think once we kind of get off that hurdle? you know, everybody starts getting vaccinated, that these numbers will start to stagnate? Or do you think we're just going to still see that increase in growth? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, th- I think we'll, I think it, it will probably drop off. I mean, p- people mm. will literally have less time, right? They'll, they'll be less incentivized to stay inside. I mean, people like us are going to be, we're always going to be doing this stuff, right? We just had a greater excuse. We were born for lockdown, right? <laughs> exactly. That, that, that was. I, I saw a great comic that was, "Hey, we're finally vaccinated. I can go back to doing the things I always wanted to do." And then he just goes and sits in a dark room on a computer. <laughs> like it's, it's I, like um, you know, people talk about their lockdowns. I'm like, yeah, no, it didn't didn't really affect me all that much. I mean, I lost my yeah. job and I bought a house, but uh, in terms of you know what I did didn't with my affect days, me that much. Quotation marks. Sure. Yeah. In terms in terms of my hobbies and, and how I spent yeah. my time, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I'm just interested because I, I feel like it's kind of like the Netflix thing too. Subscription model, people just get it and then they just set it and forget it. Like if you don't get time to play a game that month, you're probably still going to be paying for the subscription. That's true. I mean, like it doesn't, it, again, it is, it is kind of at that, that um, yeah, that, that Netflix style of, well, if it has some stuff on it a couple, for a couple of months, like I might play mm. 20 games this month and I might play like nothing next month. But it doesn't really matter. I'm kind of getting good value out I of it. I might just have it just for my Halo even though I should probably just go out and buy a disc. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, um, Dana, I mean, you obviously use Game Pass. I mean, you use it for reviewing as well, um, as as well as you're, you know, playing for fun or for Gamerscore. Yeah. So I pretty much, when Game Pass first came out, I certainly played a lot more different things. Now Game Pass is pretty much reserved for just something new that's coming like second extinction mm. uh, all over that last well tried to be had nightmare of experience so far trying to play that cooperatively i've heard it's right um mm. uh, yeah it's been a nightmare for me um game pass yeah definitely anything that's coming like day one i'll be all over that um unless you know i've already got other games coming out the same day or something game pass is yeah, it doesn't get as as much love from me as it should outside of new releases mm. i'm always watching that recently added or coming soon um definitely all over the new new releases on it but i don't really go into play yeah i can't even really give an example say uh titanfall 2 sure yeah like i played it love it um but i'm not racing to play it when it comes in because there's probably probably that day because they always re- always release games on the same day on game pass there's going to be something new and then a couple of older ones i'm always going to favor the new yeah. for the new experience and the new view opportunity instead of playing something i've already played before so game pass for me is a a review asset for sure it's obviously a cost cutter sure. in the greatest possible way with these day one launches and stuff like Outriders. Mm. Certainly, um, certainly glad I didn't have to pay for that experience. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I'll always play it. I mm. went in hoping for the best. Was disappointed, but I got to play it for no extra cost with my subscription. So that sort of mindset for me is I'll have Game Pass for life so I can always just play what's coming. Day one. Whether I'm interested or not, I've got the option to go check it out for no extra cost. Mm. Yeah. I think yeah, it's absolutely. crazy good not. value. It's it's too valuable. It's it's the best best thing Xbox has got going by far. I mean, I, I especially if you're cheap it's, it's it's really just the, the best. Yeah, it's really just the best value in gaming, hands down. To be honest, period. Yeah, outside of piracy. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex, Alex in the chat has mentioned that he's, he got into Game Pass for the value, but he's been staying for the discovery in the community, which has, has been, mm. I, I would also agree. I mean, I've, I've been discovering a lot of stuff that I wouldn't necessarily get into. Um, and also, it's it's has really fostered a community of get this fucking game done before it leaves Game Pass, which is yeah. why you know everyone <laughs> on my li- everyone on my list has been playing moving out the, the Windows 10 and the the Xbox yeah. versions of it to just get them off because they're leaving tomorrow. You gotta you gotta play yeah. moving out before it moves out. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's um, a good uh, it's a good way that he's put it there. Staying for the discovery in the community, it's sort of like the achievement hunting and the reviewing. It just opens you to more games you otherwise wouldn't play. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And without it being put on a plate in front of you, you wouldn't look twice at, yeah, say, Moving Out, for instance. It might not be your type of game when you look at the cover or look at the trailer or read the description, but because you can actually play it and try it, you might love it. Mm. You, you might t- check out the other stuff they've developed yeah. or, yeah. Or play it twice. <laughs> play it twice on two different platforms. You see, yeah. you see 20 people valking a game, then you go and do it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, exactly. If you, you 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 look at your friends and you're like, actually, these guys aren't that good at games. They finished it. I can I can get in there and get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so Alex has also rushed ahead to uh, our next story about Microsoft increasing the revenue share for PC game developers on the Microsoft Store. Um, so basically, the gist of it is that they uh, so Matt Booty's come out and said that from August first, they're going to be drop they're going to be uh, giving developers eighty eight percent. Uh, of the revenue generated from the sales of the games as opposed to the current 70%. So that mm-hmm. brings their Microsoft's cut to, down to 12%, which brings them in line with what Epic are doing uh, with their current deals, um, which I guess makes sense, I guess, because uh, Microsoft have been still struggling a fair amount in the PC space. I mean, they've definitely made strides, uh, mm-hmm. but they're in terms of market share, they're nowhere near Steam, uh, and they're, they're still probably struggling against uh, Epic in terms of um, getting people over to the platform. I'm sure, you know, Game, Game Pass, obviously, Game Pass PC helps with that kind of transition. Uh, but it's, uh, it's it's hard to drag everyone away when they've been right. using Steam for the last 100 years. Microsoft, humble bundles with achievements. That's, hey, that's, sh- that's, that's, that's how you do this. It scares me, that sort of... I've, I'm not a Steam guy. I've, I've uh, recently downloaded Steam and tried to figure it out so I can play a, uh interactive FMV, one of those full-motion video games. Mm-hmm. Um, Steam sales concern me for if I was into Steam achievements, like, I would go mental. Like yep. their sales are ridiculous. I would not be able to financially exist in this world with Steam sales. And if that sort of model was applied to Xbox, I don't know what I would do. Like <laughs> it would be insane. Uh, I mean, we, we have seen elements of it, right? Like we have, we do still see big sales. We st- we have seen some deep discounts, it's, and we've also seen a lot of crap games. It's, it's a lot better but now it's, than it's it was. The, Sorry, yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot better now than it was like around 2013, 2014, where everything was no, new and yeah, nothing went on sale, joke. and you got like a twenty five percent discount on the same game every month. I mean, again, it is still a lot of you see a lot of the same games getting discounts, but you finally get in those yeah. deeper like seventy five percent, eighty five percent discounts sometimes um, for for good stuff um, because they, again they have to be competitive, right? Mm. I've got a, I've got a general rule of not, thumb: if it's like less than five bucks or over eighty percent of the sales, then I'll usually pick it up. Yeah, I, that's that's kind of what I used to go by, and then I lost my mind a bit um, when I was just trying to play everything, and I was like, "Oh, twenty five percent off, whatever, I'll take it." Um, I've been, uh, I don't know if you've listened to the, the recent episodes, Dane, but I've I've been trying to be, not buy any games uh, last year and this year. Uh, last year I did okay. Uh, this year is str- has proven <laughs> to be a bit more of a struggle now with the new console. Um, but uh, it's. Um, the sales, they, they get me every time someone says like, hey, you know what, this is 25% off and uh, it's the first time it's gone on sale. I'm like, oh, am I going to play that? Look at the achievement list. Oh, the achievement list looks pretty good. You know, 10 hour completion. I got time. I got money. I could do it. Oh. And, you know, like the other the other 215 games in my backlog are just crying out, being like, what are you doing? Get back to, you know, grinding out Gears of War. So, you mean you're not buying any the, uh, older games just because they're on sale surely you're still buying new releases so no i'm not actually um i've i've been really really so so i i actually don't usually buy new releases at all um unless they're i mean unless they're in game pass or unless there's a really really good reason for it um so for example co-op experiences are a big one for me so uh, i always pick up the uh, um 
the We Were Here series. I'm always interested in those and that, that sort of interesting puzzle game stuff. But those are usually sort of budget titles. But in terms of AAA stuff, absolutely not. Um, I'll, I'll rent things every now and then. But like my most recent game that I probably played, that I that I bought, I'm trying to think, um, might have been Metro Exodus, which I bought on a sale oh, wow. um, that I still haven't played. But like, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've yeah. been like I played was it Modern Warfare 2019, which was really really good. Uh, but I rented that. Like I didn't buy, I didn't pay for it. So like a lot of my stuff is older titles and I've been doing a lot of backlog cleaning up because I've just, I've been collecting titles for so many years and starting so many of them that it's just, I've, I've had to put a stop to it because I know that I will, if I, if I don't stop, I will never ever hit, you know, like I, my dream is to hit 99%. And I know I'll, I, it's be really, really difficult to get there basically. What, of the of, completion ratio? Of, yeah, of, of what I have available to me. So if, if I finish, you know, if I finish what? 180 of my games out of my 215 and i'll you know i'll add games to it as time goes on because i'm you know i still want to play new things and i'm still interested in stuff like like i'm interested in outriders for example but that's you know game game pass has really been my way of of getting new games in front of me or new uh, game, games that are new to me i suppose i should say uh but i've been yeah, i've been really really resilient and 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 not buying games whether they're new or old on sale uh but it, it has been incredibly difficult because there's, there's been a big change to my behavior I certainly don't have that same level of restraint. I am a serial <laughs> offender of the deals with gold and all those seasonal sort of sales. Yep. I use true achievements for my... I still check the storefront on the Xbox for what's on sale each week, but mm-hmm. I'll go to true achievements, and I'm so much of a slave to the gamer score. I'll scroll down that list. I'll look at the price tag. I'll be like, oh, it looks all right. Or click on it and see how long it takes for the completion, and then if it's now if it's under if it's under ten dollars, and I can smash that in less than five hours or something, I'm going to buy it every time. So I'm buying stuff like that on the reg. But if I see a three dollar game and it's you know thirty hour completion, I'll still buy it, but I'm probably never going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've always got it. You've always got Gil- it. There, just always got charged. It. Every every yeah. week, anything that's under like say twelve hours, I will buy it if it's you know, less than ten dollars. That's if it's that's, above I mean, ten dollars, it's probably a game I'm semi interested in just to play. But if it's under ten dollars, can be done in less than ten hours, I'm gonna buy it, no matter what. And probably never play it. <laughs> yeah, that's that that was the mindset and I just I had to break myself for that because I was spending too much and playing too little. Yeah, it's not good. It's it's not good when you put the dollar to uh fun factor or even play factor at all. It yeah. It's generally not balanced. <laughs> no, exactly. In a good way. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. um, any anything? Any more thoughts around um, the sort of PC game stuff around the 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 cut and and what m- moves Microsoft are making in the PC space? Not really. I just really wish that we get humble bundles or something like that. Or I I mean, I guess the main problem is too like a lot of the Windows Store stuff is never really on any kind of deep discount sale. That's yeah, what I'd the, probably compare to the 2013, 2014. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely. You can tell that's newer and that they're they're still trying to wring a bit more money out of it from the PC audience. But the thing is, the PC audience is so used to those Steam sales that it's a really hard sell to them. They're so used to being given free games from Epic, like. True, true. Yeah. That was again we talked about that the other week, where it was just yeah, Epic is hemorrhaging money out of the, the store uh, just to give games away every week for for nothing. Uh, just to get people on. I wonder the if we and... see a games with gold on the PC aspect in the future uh, I, mean, I don't think so i think because like again I, we've talked about game game pass really it's, has it's supply dying i think to the yeah. point where i don't see why you would bring it to something else it's a, i'm still surprised it's still here yeah exactly I, I, I really I thought that with this generation they were just going to close it i don't up. think it will see the end of the year or if it does i don't think it will see 2022 mm, mm. it's sort of with game pass you don't don't need it really do we i know Not the difference really. is games with gold we get to keep forever you know, with game, a lot of those, a lot of games in Game Pass are going to be there forever. Sorry, it's first I, party ones. I should rephrase exactly. it. It's what I'm hopeful for, but no, will never happen. It's like it's <laughs> oh, like the okay, number one so... present on your Christmas list that you just never. I would get. certainly. I would. Uh, yeah, I'd be on board. I'd mm. I'd download the games with gold for a PC situation too. Sure. Yeah. You know, drink, drink if if it was night. available. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'm yeah. just curious if they'll ever try to match what Epic's doing, but yeah. Uh, I, I, I think with Game Pass, they almost... They I don't have. know. Maybe, maybe it's my perception of mm. 
of uh, entitlement might not be the right word. I think Game Pass is just good enough to sort of overlook four free games a month that are yeah. pretty rapidly decreasing in, in quality compared to what they're dropping into Game Pass every week. I guess, I guess sort of feels I, I, I'm always then. checking out what's in Game Pass and not. I'm, I, the, I, oft, I sometimes I've even almost forgotten to download the games with gold because they just have not. See, been I, I will always, I will always yeah. download the games with gold again, whether I want them, whether I'm interested, whether I've played them, whether I've already completed them, like mm. rented it or something. I'll download mm-hmm. it. Oh yeah, have, I won't, have it in I won't the miss one. Sure. Have it in the collection, whether I yeah. play it or not. It's it's a freebie. Who doesn't want a free sure. game? Absolutely. Um, and then this sort of like, actually yeah this last story is just uh, Halo Infinite is they've just confirmed uh, that it's going to support cross play and cross progression across the Xbox and the PC which is good I mean they, yeah. that's kind of the steps they were taking towards with Master Chief Collection anyway it, uh, it's it, it's pretty much common in uh, MCC at the moment anyway like they're yeah, pretty much working with multiplayer it out. at least right I mean I don't think they have they have there's some stuff for campaign there's no there's no um, cross play between um, like in campaign which is a bit of a disappointment because I was trying to do some stuff with Adrian the other day, circling around the mods, setting myself up for the speed runs, but it doesn't look like that's possible. But yeah, so I mean, apparently that's that's an infrastructure problem that they 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 want to work on, but apparently requires a lot of like a lot of work for them to do. So yeah. they're just gonna they're gonna leave it. I mean, the um, game works at the moment. Yeah, this is a long, a long way, a long way, a long way away in the last few years for sure. Because three four three put that thing out in a fucking horrific state. I, I can I can see this game now actually being completable. In, in this year so that's all I'm hopeful for um, saying that some of the screenshots that are coming out lately are beautiful like, I'm so keen for this game I'm, I'm assuming you're going to be on this day one probably it's, I mean it's going to be Game Pass so more than likely yeah, true. legendary true. solo run for me yeah, yeah I'll uh, infinite for me will be I'll play it for the review then I will not be going back so you're not, not a big Halo fan uh I loved the earlier Halos. I've sort of... It's just not... I don't really know how to describe it. I suppose now in particular, I don't play multiplayer games. Like, I don't have sure. time yep. to commit to a game, to keep coming back to something. And sadly, Anthem and Avengers are the only games I go, I've, I go back to, even though I've got no more achievements, just for a cheeky round or two. Second Extinction, I'll play this for another day or two, get the review out, and I won't be back. If I just don't... With Infinite be a bit different it's probably gonna take a lot longer it'll probably keep my attention a little more due to its more open structure Hmm. but no i've i've not particularly interested in it i didn't particularly care for the what was it was it e3 not e3 Uh, it was an xbox showcase or something wasn't it yeah it did break the brute (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah. (laughs) quality of the uh visuals aside yeah infinite doesn't um doesn't appeal to me too much I'll be playing it. I'll be hoping to enjoy it. As I've you know, reach, reach is my favorite Halo. Reach is great. I love oh, reach is amazing. <clears throat> as long as this you know, isn't then... Halo Five, I'm going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I am looking forward to it, but I, I don't think I'll stick with it as much as I have with older games, just purely because of how my approach to gaming has changed. <clears throat> it's play it, enjoy it, move on to the next thing. Yeah, I'll be keen to see how how different it is with the new structure. A less linear approach will be weird to get used to. It's like Gears 5. I'm not a huge fan of how they tried to open it up a little bit with the... Yeah, yeah. See what they're doing. They didn't push it too far. They didn't make it too open. They sort of just tested the waters a little bit with those mm. open areas, optional objectives. I don't want Halo to be open world. Like, mm. I think that's what it needs. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I like a little bit more structure with those. I think that's why they've worked better. Uh, yeah, being a bit more tightly focused. Being too open, I think, is fun for those people that will play like Assassins or Red Dead where they love getting sidetracked by stuff. I just want to play the story. <laughs> I want to be... I, I want to be, I want that's to be what we refer to in the that. industry as a Ubisoft title. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Climb, climb a fucking tower. <clears throat> I'm... Uh, I'm sure since I've said I enjoy Avengers and Anthem, it'll be no surprise I'm pro Ubisoft. I love that shit. <laughs> um, Far, Far Cry is the only Ubisoft series I just, that just cannot grab me. 
Really? Ooh. That's. I don't know that's... what it is. I, I'm just not in. Five really intrigued me with the story. Mm. Uh, like in their trailers and the build up and stuff. Lost it instantly. See, like, I, right, right, did right. not like, click for me. I love three and four. Like three and four, are, like two of my most amazing games. But five just felt like a massive misstep. Oh, I, just I don't could know. not get into it. Yeah. Mm. I like. I, I enjoy five, but it's definitely not my favorite. Um, and and as I'll talk about. Um, well, actually, this this you know I'm going to segue this. I'm going to segue into what I've been playing because Far Cry is on that fucking list, and I want to bitch about it. Yep. Um, no bad mouth primal, please don't. No, <laughs> primal's <laughs> okay. Two is horrible. Okay. Pri- pri- I mean, primal you can tell was rushed, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's the exact same map as four. As four, yeah, it's identical. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, so I've been, so I haven't really been playing video games. I have been moving from one boost to another boost, and, and from one grind to another. Um, this so, is going to be um, a common theme this week. Yes, I think yeah. so. So, uh, uh, so you're getting the, the first stuff out of the way. So I hit my one point six um, million. Uh, so as long time listeners will know. Uh, I try to pick a terrible or weird game to hit my hit, to do my uh, exact a thousand on. Um, so for this one, I picked uh, Strike Force Two Terrorist Hunt, uh, which is uh, so I, I mentioned that I was like, hey, yeah, it seems like there weren't any kayaks in the game. There are no kayaks in the game. I finished the game. There are no kayaks. It's just it's complete false advertising. Um, it is the worst game I've ever played, uh, bar really? none. Um, it is terribly it's terribly organized it's massively glitchy awfully signposted horrifically voice acted has no real challenge um is uh the story is non-existent uh and the achievements and one of the achievements the achievements are not well the achievements are fine for the most part except for one which is massively glitchy uh which is for achievement for getting a headshot which you should get with the first fucking person that you kill uh, I had to play the final mission five times in a row, killing every single enemy with a headshot. Like, and but when I, and also this game is ridiculously like like rough auto aim. It will snap to center mass of every any enemy that even gets anywhere near you. So, at, so me shooting everyone in the head involved me running up to an enemy, letting them shoot me because I take basically no damage because like, the enemies basically have no, are not threatening at all. And manually dragging my stick back because I'm invert. Well, also the inversion doesn't work, which also fucks with me. Uh, the settings menu doesn't work properly, and I had to manually push the stick up to drag the reticule up to the enemy's head and just pull the trigger. And I repeated that ad nauseum probably about four to five hundred times trying to get this achievement to unlock. Yes, it was. I was a- like, you need a name, but it was a fucking <laughs> nightmare, and I hated every minute of it. Um, but it's done now, so that's great. Um, and the thing is, because because I'm so particular about hitting my game, hitting my milestones exactly with a thousand, with a game completion with a thousand points on exactly the the one point six <laughs> or the one point seven, I couldn't play any other game until I got this fucking achievement. So I was stuck sitting there for hours working on this shit, wondering if I was going to be there till the end of time. So fuck that game. So Adrian uh, and- just commented too. You can't even get a headshot. So please get good. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> Eat a dick. Uh, and fuck you, Valak, <laughs> for recommending it. Uh, I also were you, um, were you better for the experience though? I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm better for at least never having to do it again. Are you better um, at headshots though? That's I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I mean, I could play that game blindfolded. Also, like trying to understand how, like the sign, like where to go in that game is just anyway. It's, it has to be seen to be believed. Um, another terrible game I played was uh, Last Dead End. Um, which again was another is another first person. This has some weird third person elements. It is from a European, like a, I think it's like an Eastern European developer. Uh, terrible voice acting, uh, awful combat. Three to uh, four hour max out though, is it not? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I got it done in two. I got it done in like two. So it is a you can you can get Good you point. can rinse it pretty quickly. Saving that bad boy at the moment. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely get into it. Um, it was it was bad, but it's like again, like it was uh, inoffensive for the most part, but obviously very poorly optimized, terrible effects, a lot of bad triggering, uh, and just nonsensical bullshit. It's uh, and uh, unfortunately, like only one of the cutscenes is skippable, but it is what it is. Got go got the thousand out of that, rinsed it, got rid of it. Um, did uh, sw- did some more swim sanity with uh, Valak, Mike, and uh, and Nev. Uh, we finally got through all of the survival maps. So all we have left is finishing all the levels on hard mode, 
when I finish that game, it will be one of my highest ratio games, which is really weird because it's not actually that difficult. It just has that um, games with gold, you know. Uh, Everybody just touched it and then were massively turned off that. This was exactly, they played to the first level and like, what the fuck is this? This fucking co-op side-scrolling bullshit shooter. Uh, yeah, it's not a very good game. Uh, there's not a lot to it. It's you know, like it's it has like multiplayer modes and stuff, but really it's like a. In terms of content, there's about maybe an hour or two of content stretched out to eight to ten. So it is what it is. I'll, I will get it done. The 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 hard mode is actually quite difficult. It's pretty unforgiving, but okay. you can you can grind out a lot of the multiplayer stuff to get better guys, better better abilities that you need to do anyway for an achievement. So you do that first, come back to the hard stuff later. It's not that bad. Uh, and then I've been doing Gears of War two, which is still running in the background here trying to get my level 100 i'm level 97 uh, i'm hoping to hit 99 and then we'll see it might be hit 100 tomorrow and then i'll be done and dusted with that game uh this is gears of war japan which means yeah you know it's been just a massive grind the xp multiplier has been turned off so it's taken me four times as long as it should have and it's just been the uh it's just it's just been I've just been Sisyphus pushing the damn rock up the hill only to have it roll back when the game disconnects and I lose all my experience for my grind. So which gears are you starting next? No, I'm no I'm <laughs> never playing another gears game ever again. Alright? Like gears what like I, I need to go back and finish gears three, but that that is gonna be one of those like I give I'll you eighteen months and... and then you do seriously three point oh. Yeah, I mean I you <laughs> you the sad thing is that you're probably fucking right, because again, I am doing backlog and it yeah. that's a... Uh, that's a big chunk of it, and that would be a really good completion to get done. Uh, unfortunately, I can't finish Judgment, but it is what it is. You need to get Jester. We haven't played with Jester in so long. We haven't played with Jester, actually. We should hit him up. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Far Cry 2 has been my sort of solo grind uh, when I want to play something instead of playing something. So between all these other grinds when I need other people for most of the time, I've been doing Far Cry 2 double boxing for the, uh, the kills. Uh, you need about 8,000 kills or so. Uh, so you need to get a certain amount of downs and then after they're down to get a certain amount of executions. And then you also need to get a certain amount of headshots. Unfortunately, headshots don't count towards downs or executions. So you need to do, you know, another, you know, 5,000 of those as well. I've made good progress, but some of those weapons just take so fucking long. Like you need like 500 kills, you know, 250 downs and 250 headshots per weapon, per class mm. for the high level stuff. It just, it's, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's... It is what it is. It's just been a grind, but I haven't really played anything this week. It's just yeah. been working on grinds. Um, I'll probably go back to like Sacred Two and stuff like that. A lot of my non-backwards compatible stuff that I really need to work on. Uh, hoping to get Iron Brigade done at some stage, but uh, that puts me at three thousand five hundred and twenty-four for this week. Very nice. Dwayne, do you want to go next? Uh. I actually, believe it or not, the last two weeks I haven't played a whole lot yep. with uh, some hectic mischief in the personal and work life, doing some longer hours and some other things going on. So I haven't really played a whole lot other than I spent about six hours from midnight last night trying to play Second Extinction my friend yeah. in western australia we were playing for about five or ten minutes at a time before we would get disconnected mm -hmm. so that's that's been yeah. fun losing all our progress um prior to that we were playing some more it takes two which i played through to review with my fiance uh, just after launch me and him have been having a blast being equally useless uh, on that been having a lot of fun a lot of laughs uh that that one that one's been, been on my um on my, on my list that's definitely one of those like i really want to like i re i might just buy it actually because it is it's a really cool game have I, you played I, a way I, out yeah i really enjoyed a way <sighs> out and i like like i love brothers and like i really enjoy yeah. the sort of co-op experiences and, like i talked about with um we were here and that sort of stuff like, yeah. i really enjoy that kind of game like, yeah, i have a job it's at so the moment cool. so it's i can such buy a this good game. game oh dear it's so good it's been one of the most casual, probably two week periods for me in terms of actually playing stuff for the fun of it. He's just mm. started playing Star Wars Battlefront Two, so we've been playing that. I completed that well over a year ago. Still playing a bit of that. Um, new release titles for review. I've played a fair few of a fair few of those. 
uh, Little Mouse's Encyclopedia, which I'm sure will be on Achievement Hunter's radars. That bad boy can be done in like 15 minutes or something. I played on a dummy account, so I didn't unlock them all on my own. I heard that one's and, uh, really good if you got a kid with you. I like played it with ones. my four-year-old son who has um, autism. Okay. Um, so he finds video games, uh, they're, well, where we have found, they're really relaxing for him. Hmm. Um, and a good little educational tool, and he absolutely loved it. It's probably the best kids game I can think of in terms of simplicity and like educational download. Yeah. It's a really cool, it's like a picture book. A playable picture book hmm. teaches you about shit. Like you know, an animal will tell you what it's called, what it does, point out bits of its body. Like it's not a great game, maybe for say your average you know, non-parent who's playing games just for for their own enjoyment. Won't take away the same as like I did playing it with my four-year-old. Hmm. Yeah. Certainly a great kids game. Um, Ant, Ant Ventor, seen that? Another one that's probably on the Achievement Hunter radar. It's like less than an hour. It's a point and click about an ant. It's quite entertaining and uh, comical. A entertaining, uh, yeah. Entertaining, yeah. There's some uh, amusing shenanigans going on there. The Dark Side Detective, a, another Achievement Hunter radar one. A mm -hmm. um, little point and click that references like and Monkey Island, all those classic sort of LucasArts yeah. era titles are back in the day. Um, yeah. Man, still going back to Avengers, of course, because you know, someone's got to do it. <laughs> yeah, there literally, um, literally uh, needs to be at least one person. I'm, I'm happy to uh, pick the hammer up and go to town for a little bit. Um, Jeez, I should give you my account to get through it. Always on my own. I don't like playing. I don't play well with others. As uh, oh yeah, yep. no, I've said that. Yep. As you can understand you. that reference. Uh, yeah. So I've it's been very casual the last couple of weeks for for what I'm playing. But my typical play a is I come home, play something, write about it, move on to the next thing to play and write about. Mm. Um, okay. There's never, you know, maybe two or three hours a week I'll stop and play some some Anthem or Avengers or yeah. something just for me to chill out for a second between sort of working on something, playing through it just to write about it. Typically a work play situation for me each day. I'm not I'm not picking something I'm looking forward to playing. I'm just working through the list of, you know, what what's next to publish. Sure, sure. The game score has certainly taken a slide. I've got 4,420 this month, apparently. Last month wasn't much better. Yeah, I'm, March was all right. I mean, I say, I say like a, a 10K month is pretty good, to be honest. Like that's, that's Yeah, kind that's, of... that's sort of what I normally try to, um, try to do. This year I haven't, but I've also been doing more reviews each month than I was last year. So I'm trying to double down on the review front. So the game score's taken a hit. But mm. at 777,609 right now, next three months are all business <laughs> because no matter what, lie, one million is happening. All right, well, so, um, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll give you we'll back on the show to celebrate. <laughs> uh, hopefully we're celebrating. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, this, celebrating or commiserating, whatever it is. I'm, I'm uh, a little worried about this month because it's a nightmare for releases, really. With um, you know, Resident Evil Eight in yep. like a week, uh, same day if you pre-order, which I'm going to is um, Hood, mm -hmm. uh, Outlaws and Thieves, like yep. Outlaws and Thieves, Outlaws and something. Yeah. Yep. Looks awesome anyway. Um, so they're both on the same day, and then there's the Mass Effect Legendary Collection, of course, mid month, and then Bio Mutant the other big one for me on the 25th so those um, sort of meaty stack of games as it is in terms of a resident evil or although re uh that reverse got delayed didn't it yes it did till, till yeah. summer so probably like, yeah. probably so june july well, that's not so much of a, a workload game now as far as <laughs> playing through to get the review out I don't, I don't see myself getting too much gamer score this month, which puts more pressure on June because whatever I don't do in May and June, 
I'm doing in that. July. Yeah. If that's 223,000 in July, that's what it's going to be. I'm going to throw down some cash. I've already got a shit ton of games that I've been picking up in the sales, uh, like Little Mouse's Encyclopedia and stuff. It was yeah. a code opportunity. I intentionally played on a dummy account because I'd seen seen there was some tasty G's in there. So <laughs> I've been stockpiling, and uh, as including with my reviews. If I if I know it's got easy gamer score, I'm reviewing it on the dummy account so I can save it for July. Hmm. July is going to be mental. I've got the Zitalon games all backpiled. I've got the <laughs> Zitalon uh, PC games. You know, I've been back. I haven't played a Rattalaka since about June last year, so those bad boys are ready to go. Oh wow! Chili Dog Interactive Interactive have come into the fold with their easy nonsense. So, July is going to be massive. Chili Dog Interactive. Uh, what, what I do, do in what do they do? I can't even uh, name the games. Sadly, off the top of my head, I can't name them because I haven't been playing them. I've been buying <laughs> them and saving them for July. <laughs> that that memorable. Uh, um, well, I haven't played them. They yeah. would be memorable, at least somewhat, if I had played them. But, um, I can't remember what they're doing, but they're like yeah. 10, 15 minute jobs. Right, right. Um, so they've become a reliable help to the cause. <laughs> so, yeah, July will be mental. No matter what, I'm hitting that million. I don't care how much sleep I don't, ha- I don't get that month. <laughs> All right. All right. And uh, right, Cameron, what have you been working on? All right, so most of my week two has been about the boost. Um, I've swapped out my Mass Effect goal for the year for Ubisoft server closures. As you guys are aware, Rainbow Six Siege 1... Sorry, Rainbow Six Siege Vegas 1 and 2 are going down, as well as... What's the one that you're working... Future Soldier, which I forgot to mention. I did... I just finished the boost for that as well. I just finally got the completion. Cool. Um... So, Siege 1, a lot of it can just be boosted with two players, so we knocked out quite a bit of it, just objective-based. Um, 1 hasn't really held up at all, in my opinion. Doesn't look... It's an old, it's an old game. Vegas 1 is an old game. Yeah. yeah. 2, I think two's like two years older than it, and it looks amazing compared to 1. Mm-hmm. Um, saying that, unfortunately, the multiplayer achievements need six people for that. So, out of that, I've boosted most of my kills and most of my kills and I just need sniper stuff as well and me and Adrian have started in the story which isn't that bad kind of that yeah, I, I thought it was fine like I thought it was interesting I, like I actually quite enjoy playing it on like realistic difficulty like there is a little bit of challenge to it like it's not yeah and it's kind of got like yeah. that halo feel of like somebody can go ahead and the other person can use as a checkpoint yeah. it's a good co-op experience um so yeah me and Adrian were enjoying that and having a bit of a laugh with it um had to get moving out windows 10 done before it leaves game pass because i own the xbox um i own a physical copy of the xbox one so i'll probably do that later on um great game i only had difficulty with a few levels the windows one i think you said you were having some issues with i didn't find it that bad it was just annoying because it was like Mm. you know you'd get almost everything through and then you would walk around the corner wrong and smash into it and you're like oh well fuck the only one the only one I really struggled with was the DLC with the, um, uh, I want to say jetpack, but that's not it. Um, the scuba, 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 gear, scuba gear. Yeah. Um, that one level where you had to scuba from the wing into the back of the truck. Oh yeah. I couldn't unlock it until I did the exact same thing with all three on the level. Really? And I oh. don't know if it's just windows 10 specific. Because I talked to Mike mm. and Valak about it as well, and it was just... Um, I seemed to be okay for me when I did it, but... Um, they didn't have the same yeah. issue, so I'm just... Interesting. I mean, you, you you are chronically unlucky when it comes to shit like that, to be yeah. fair. But um, did the first two off the wing, did the very third one off the top of the map, and that's what got it, so... Oh, you know, you didn't have to do it off the wing. See... You- Okay, so you did. You didn't have to do it off the wing. You you had to do it off the the first one. That they off the top of the map is the way you had to. do I it tried from. that like five times and it wouldn't work. So then I tried the wing solution because that's what was on TA. And then I finally yeah. tried all three going across the map, and that's what got it. So yeah, I just did it all the way across the map, and just they just worked for me. So first um, times. results may vary. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if you're listening to this now, you've got about uh, a day to finish the game, yeah. so get on it. Good game though, like really good game. Yeah, yeah, really good actually. I'm, 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 I'm glad that I got to play because I wasn't 
Mm. I wasn't going to bother. I was like, I was looking at the list and I was like, ah, like it's got a relatively high T, like a pretty, like actually a really high TA ratio. Yeah. Which usually means that it's like somewhat difficult or there's just some challenge in there. But no, it was just massively inflated from Game Pass. Kind of fits in with Team 17's kind of like library games, like similar stuff like Overcooked, that co op kind of experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Saying that, I'll just talk smart moves. That's done. Um, That one, the F9 glitch is getting removed. I think the first week of May. Oh, uh, so Adrian helped me with that one. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Three, Three Hundred and Sixty, did a bit of boosting on that. Everybody now has got their boot camp achievements, and we're moving on to the game heroic stuff, which is just um, like fifty defuse the bombs, that kind of stuff. It's just trying to get the lobby locked down and get that all done. Um, one of my mates from high school reached out to me this week about Cold War. Because now that you can cross-play on that one, he wanted to do some zombies. Mm. Back in my high school days, we would just go over to... Can you guys still hear me? Yep, yep. Oh, sorry. My headset just made noise. Um, back in, like, when I was 15, 16, we would just pretty much all go to the same house in Swan Hill, set up, like, four consoles and do co-op zombies until we got bored. And quite enjoyed that, so very nostalgic. They actually, for once... We're actually concerned about getting the achievements. It's wow. quite funny. Wow. Because okay. ev- everybody everybody at my level, friends-wise, is just like, it's an addiction. You can kick it. I think the Hall of Fame kind of changed the opinion of it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, exactly. They're like, no, nah, there's no saving him. He's, he's, fu- <laughs> he's fucking done. Yeah. But I um, quite enjoyed that and started working on the... <sighs> How do I explain this one? Um, there is Dead Ops Arcade in Cold War. But they added oh. a mode that is advanced solo, so every fourth round will save as a checkpoint because you mm. need to get to round 64 to get the 15G achievement. Oh, okay. Which originally was an absolute pain in the ass, um, and I think it took people like four to six hours off the top of my head. Right, right. But yeah, um, it just makes it very easy. And then I went back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 20... Uh, sorry, not 2019. The remaster that was included with Infinite Warfare mm-hmm. and got everything done in it except for the Mile High Club and the weapons because Series X uh, loads way too quickly to abuse the checkpoint. <laughs> <laughs> I, tried it, I tried it for a good hour to see if I could do it legit, but I'm just like, nah, yeah, I could is, be spending... I mean, still- still hard it's yeah. still difficult it's a, it's I, still I, a good challenge thing is too i know it's one of those things that i could get legit if i put enough time into it but it's like i want to get i, the, I, did, I want to get all the cuts did, done this year i did it legit on the 360 back in the day it, it is possible yeah um but that's all my cods um halo mcc i am now down to 35 achievements me and aftos have been pretty much running through all of halo 2 on heroic doing the skulls and then repeating the missions on easy for the time. Um, Regret was the last one that I needed a time-based one on that I've been struggling with for years. I managed to find... I kind of used Naked Eli's Guide, which um, historically really good um, Hello MCC speedrunner uh, that kind of just quit after Halo 5, used some of his stuff, and then ended up hybriding a triple jump at the start of the mission and abusing where the um, abusing where the uh, I guess the environment is to start the gondola so jumping mm. back onto the grass and jumping back really quickly and getting three minutes shaved off our time to get Steve in the achievement oh nice which was really good um, going for on legend uh, sorry not on legendary on heroic for the score attacks and Halo 2 is holding up a lot better than what I thought it had Mm, okay. I'm, I'm just wondering if it's a solo experience that I didn't really enjoy because nobody would play with it, uh, play me, with me back in the day, or if it's a this is I mean, meant the, for the, a co-op kind of thing. The game is the, like all the Halos are better in co-op. Like yeah. that's just just how it is. I just I find that a lot of the levels in Halo Two are just really not great. Too but much I, flood. I think it was Delta Halo though. There is a a skip to get it down to like five minutes on Legendary. Wow, okay, I didn't know about 15. that. Saying that, I did this skip so well it despawned every single enemy in the match, uh, in the in the map. Um, to which point also destroys the um, end checkpoint. 
Oh, okay. So it doesn't trigger anything. That's so right. it doesn't trigger anything at the very end. So we go through the whole mission. And I was just like, look, I have to bring it up on the podcast. It's a bit of a laugh. Me and me and um, Stephen just went for a leisurely, leisurely scroll, just having a look at the environment, appreciating the beauty of it all, not doing anything but sightseeing. Um, other than that, did a two hour session that turned into a five and a half hour session today to boost out all my legendary medals. Um, I've just got a few aspects of multiplayer to do. I'm trying to get my games to download on my laptop, but it is, <laughs> it is 800 megabytes too big to download the file after installing every other aspect of my laptop. Um, pretty much, I, I think in the next month I'll have this done. That's, that's hugely impressive. I'm getting really, I'm getting really close. I'm, like, I'm just, oh, I'm so happy this has been, like, six years. And are you going to start all over again on the uh, PC version? Wait, there's a stack? No, so there, there isn't a stack. <laughs> I was going to say, not, there's not oh, a stack. I thought there was. My bad. My no, it's, cr- it's cross-compatible, yeah, so they, 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 they didn't oh. get a stack in there. there. There is a Chinese version you could try, though. Oh, wait, that, that might be what I'm thinking. That yeah, has it's a different region, isn't there? Four discontinued achievements, though, it I does, think. Yes, so I'm like, mm. Um... But no, it's been it's been absolutely great. I've absolutely loved it. Uh, other than that, my other two most played games of the week: Judgment. Oh mm. my god, this game is amazing! Like, I I don't want to I don't want to jump ahead and say game of the year, but it's it's yeah. Oh well, boy, I mean it is only April, but okay. I mean, like, uh, yeah, because the game uh, mixed in with. You know, really interesting chase scenes. Mm. I love it. Some of them kind of drag out a little bit, but I think I've upgraded enough stuff now to make it uh, worthwhile. Uh, I'm just trying to... Like, it's just deductive reasoning. Um, I had a game I was going to compare it to the other day that was better than L.A. New York, but I'm trying to think what it was. Uh... I said it the other day, and I can't think what it was now. Mental blank. One of the Sherlock Holmes games? No, it wasn't. Anyway, um, definitely recommend as soon as it goes on sale, pick it up. I mean, it's just the environment's very typical. Saying that, I think they're a, a, they're teasing a sequel in the next week. Yes, they yeah they they it's pretty yeah it, it was quite popular, so I wouldn't be surprised. Sega's just on fire though. Like, I'm I'm glad that all this is coming to Xbox and. Like like a dragon will definitely get a sequel. This will definitely get a sequel. Um, now they they just need to bring Persona over and then we're good. I would not be surprised. Like, hmm. um, saying that Kiwami too. I've been jumping back to the story in that. Just depends on what console I'm on at the moment because one's installed on the other. If Nikita's playing Lego Rock Band, then I'm on the other. Um, just pushing through. I don't think there's really much to add from what I've been doing otherwise other than just amazing story, good fight scenes. I think after I've finished all these games, I do want to I would do want to go to the Red Light District and just like one day in the future and just dwell into it because it just, just, just what just just in your in your local <laughs> at the, I mean, I, I don't know how else to put it. Like, I just, I'm very interested in going to Japan. You're very interested in prostitutes. Yeah, we yes, get it. yes, we get that's it, exactly we get it. it. <laughs> we get, we get it. You're Australian, all right. <laughs> um, other than that, yeah, most of the week has been just boosting. Um, quick shout out to Lone Wolf that helped me with some of the Halo MCC stuff. Uh, Pete with multiple E's in boosting sessions. <laughs> I joined into two of these sessions, um, especially the one in Halo today, and I'm just like, so so how do I pronounce it? Is it six E's? Is it seven E's? Is it a silent E? Yeah, good luck with that. Um, oh, yeah, and the one arsehole that decided to give me neutral feedback for not having enough people for a session. Wow. That's so, so that, like, that's, yeah, okay, that's, that's... I tried to run Halo MCC to do multiplayer, and he was the only other person that turned up, so neutral feedback. Wow. And okay. then I got a mess. I just like sent him a nice message, just like kindly, like, what the fuck? Yeah. And he's like, deal with it. So I'm like, wow. Oh. Okay. So I'm like, all right, cool. Wow. Okay. Cool. That's, 
Cool. So, but I mean, I'm still around 99%. It's still uh, better than the one person that showed up. Uh, sorry, showed up an hour late to a Vegas 2 session this week. Because he had had lunch and was running a bit long. Mm-hmm. And then the next session went, oh, it was only like 10 minutes. But anyway, I digress. 6,204 this week. Nice. It's a good number. And um, hopefully Vegas 1 and 2 over the next few weeks and bust it out pretty quickly and go to Far Cry 2. Yep. But yeah. Uh, um, all right. You want to ask questions? Uh, we've got a couple more questions here that we'll just quickly fire through. Um, so we've got a question here from, uh, from Audrey Lilly, Charlotte, a uh, friend of the show. Uh, hi, Charlotte. I'm not sure if you're watching. I think you are, but uh, we're going we're gonna to answer your question here. What was... Uh... Uh, what would be the first game you would recommend for a new Xbox player? Not new to gaming, but just Xbox. Who just bought their first Xbox Series X. 100% asking for a friend. Because, <laughs> yeah, because you definitely don't want to admit to dropping 800 bucks out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> uh, on, a, so, on a Series X. <laughs> so we're talking first party Xbox situation, obviously. Yeah, probably. Or, 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 or so, something that's, that's in Game Pass that, that definitely should be looked at. Yeah. Controversial, perhaps. Ori and the Will of the Wisps would be think... my Xbox go-to. I, I, I probably would. I would. I was thinking about recommending um, Blind Forest first, just for. Just oh, to... or that. Yeah, but, yeah. To go but, back. But I think. But, yeah, but I think that. Yeah, I think that was that was a strong one on on my list as well. Such. I, I love yeah. the original. Um, and I've heard really good things about uh, Will of so the Wisps. So definitely, yeah. I'd... Playing, yeah. Say the pair actually, you're right. Blind mm. Forest and Will of the as a duo, yeah. Do one, then do the other, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, for for first party situation, definitely the Ori pair for me, hands down. Uh, to me, Cameron? to me, it's going to depend on. I've the got individual. to slip in. Sorry, I've got to slip Go in. Quantum Break. I've got to give a shout out for my boy yes. Quantum Break. Yeah. Come on, needs more love than it gets. I think Fair damn game. I think <laughs> you were going to suggest Control with Remedy as well, Matt. Yes, Everybody should remedy. suggest remedy. Yes, video um, gods. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, re, re, yeah. So control is fantastic, especially now that you've got a Series X. It has the enhancements, yeah. um, and it has the assist modes for when you get frustrated with shit and you just want to kill things in one hit and not die. You know, or if you just don't want to <laughs> do it for that at all. Well, I mean, if you're doing a stack, definitely do it. Um, <laughs> but yes, I would say yeah, control is definitely a great one to do. Um. Undertale is another great recommendation in there. I think uh, if you're into, if you, I, I know that Charlotte's into those kinds of games, so I think yep. that's a good one. Um, I'm, uh, I guess I probably well, I'm going to steal one from Cameron, and I'm going to say um, Sunset Overdrive. Hmm. I think is is just a great open world, ridiculous game that's not very difficult. There's not really any penalty for death. You just kind of just just kind of just grind around, shoot the shit out of enemies. And just, you know, get to laugh at the juvenile humour. Yeah. I've got a few. Thanks for stealing one of mine. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, like Sunset Overdrive, if that's your kind of game, has the right mix of humour. I love the mobility of it. Um, mm. Xbox One generation for me, Sunset Overdrive and Titanfall were two of my favourites just because I am very much a... I want to feel movement in my games. I want to be... You know, Titanfall, you can just do combos skate across the map crazy sunset's pretty much the same i don't mind the collectibles not the end of the world i actually quite enjoyed um going across the environment uh it, i'm hesitant because i'm pretty much going to cater it towards the person that is i'm um, going for it what kind of game you are i mean if you are purely into racing i would definitely recommend forza horizon 4 it's my number one beautiful game um, mm. In all the gaming, I don't think playground games will ever come out with anything from now on that is ugly. I think when we get Fable, it's just going to be an absolute gem. I'm looking forward to it. Um, saying that, Timefall 2, Perfected Timefall. Uh, if you're into the Battle Royale, I'd even as go as far as saying Apex Legends, just for the mobility at the same time. If you are a gamer that is purely into your indies for that love of it, I would recommend Undertale, even though I would say it's not for me. Um, mm. And I would definitely recommend Undermine because that is probably the number one game out of Game Pass that has just purely made me an addict. 
It is such a simple gem of a game that just keeps you coming back wanting more. Whether that's um, playing or pleasure, that's up to the run. <laughs> um, but it is an absolute phenomenal game. Um, and then I guess the very last one, RTS fans, Age of Empires 2. Oh yeah, also yeah, PC Game Pass, I suppose yeah. is yeah. If you, I mean, if you I mean, PC, you're going, you're going for an Xbox player, but I mean, I mean, if you want, even want an RTS on console, Halo Wars two. True. Actually, I mean, the, the entire Halo catalog is pretty much on there, right? So, mm. um, there's there's a lot to. Well, if you play Master Chief, Master Chief Collection, if you ever want to play a Halo game, is basically the best way to do it. Yeah, I think it's probably the, one of. The, once again, it comes down to what kind of player you are. But if you're an FPS player, I mean, why would you not get an Xbox or Halo? True. And and, and trust me, Joe, I'll have plenty of other recommendations as we go through the list and as things get added. But um, but th- I think that's that's plenty to get you started. <laughs> There's be plenty good. you can find on Game Pass. Um, yeah, be good for the rest of the year, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we had um, another question here from Hawkeye Barry. Uh, Gears 3 has weapon skins you can unlock if you did something in a previous game like beat Gears 1 on insane mode would you like to see sequels do more of this to reward players who have played earlier games in the franchise I want avatars back <laughs> <laughs> Xbox 360 did it so well and there's so many games I love going back to that have avatar rewards like Lego Rock Band where you can just you can just be pumping out on stage with your avatar like it's so cool why do we not see this anymore I'm guessing because no one fucking did it. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of... It's found its little cult community. I think yeah. for the most part... I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure a majority would say they didn't give two shits about their avatar on the 360. <laughs> exactly. Like, I like I, I was like, it was cool when I got, like, the, the magic card avatar award that meant a dragon show up or whatever, but I was like, cool. Like, I'll look at that for two seconds. You just have but, no like, love for Turbo when, Joyride. When do you no, ever I, see it? It's like, it, yeah, Lego exactly. Rock Band when, when I'm scrolling is the only through. time for it to shine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, Motocross Madness and Joy, Jetpack, or was it? No, um, yeah, Joyride. Um, I, just, I just find but, it weird because it was like such a... I would say back on the 360 era, it was such a part of personality. Mm. Like, it was like, hey, check me out kind of thing. Whereas in ever since 2013, that's just not existed really not really well i mean they, they do have avatars available like you can still get them like they, they, you still get them on the current consoles but just they just don't talk about them at all because I'm no just, one cares i'm just wondering though whether it was just the fact that they got it added, added so late in the xbox one generation or if it was uh, uh part of that i mean it was yeah. it was i remember when they came out it was trying to they were trying to capture some of that you know that we magic because I know yeah. there was like playstation had that what was it um playstation home or whatever where you could make your own character and wander around your, your your super sterile living room thing it was it was weird it was that was when second life was popular like they were trying to get in on trends in the same way Wait. they did with you know connect and other you're things. saying second life isn't popular anymore unfortunately not oh. it's like sims online sims online happened uh, it did it did technically <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and, and but getting back to the actual question uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I would. I love stuff like that. I mean, as long as it doesn't affect achievements, obviously, because that kind yeah. is a bit annoying. But like, I really like it when it's like, oh, hey, you know, you played this version of the game. Here's like an unlockable costume or a cool little extra thing, or or you know, like I, I like when you have story continuity with that stuff. Where like even in Mass Effect Two, for example, like they had like little bits and pieces with characters that you met from the first game that wouldn't show up if you didn't import your yeah. save file. And like it was usually just like a conversation or like a really small quest that didn't really mean much, but getting that feeling of continuity is one of those big things that like that really immersive feeling about video games that you, you feel like you have an impact. I'm just trying to remember if that was a thing when it came to Wolfenstein, the new order and Wolfenstein Two: the new Colossus or whether it was a... technically, yes, because of what the character that you decide yeah. at the beginning um, does impact the game a little bit. Yeah. But, they... but the other thing is that the, the other character that it changes dies no matter what. So it doesn't really, I'm just I'm just trying to think because I think there was one game that actually pulled from the save file to make that decision. Um, well, I mean the walking the Walking Dead stuff does. Yeah, actually, it might have been the Walking Dead that I was thinking of. Yeah, Walking, um, walking Dead, and my and you know the, the Telltale games in general. I mean, to me, this purely comes down to what it is. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example, but 
I mean, if I've if I've started with the the first one of the series, as long as it's something that like if the servers are shut down or that, I don't want to feel like I'm getting penalized. Sure, and I think most of the time, like I think like he, the, the example he gave with the weapon skins or like a little badge for playing in the beta or whatever, like sure, whatever, like it's 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 low impact enough, but it feels like you get something at least. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. For me, I don't know if we need it. I think it's. I think that sort of stuff has a place for different types of players. I think it's sort of like the Avatar situation. Avatar is more geared towards people that are maybe more interested in the social aspect mm-hmm. of you know what their Xbox profile is about being more community uh, aware or something perhaps like a, a skin for is this the case for like gears of war i'm not too sure yeah so, so if you, gears, gears of war 3 will, will check your save file for um for if you have achievements in the yeah, previous gears for example or uh, it gives like, you ha- stuff. Ha- hey hey i think halo did something with some of their waypoint stuff as well um again it was very minor like cosmetics yeah see like I think it really depends on what the what the player's into. For me, multiplayer on like Gears or Halo, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. I'm going to try it. I'm not going to play it properly. Sure. So I'm not. So if they're giving me recognition for something that's only going to be in the multiplayer, I'm not really interested. Mm-hmm. If it was something, you know, that affected maybe the campaign somehow, I'd be more appealing. It's a skin for. Yeah, multiplayer things neither here nor there for me personally. I can see why some people would want it also see is there really a need for it Mm. i can sort of see both sides of the argument it depends what you're into really there's no right or wrong is there there's no no exactly there should be or shouldn't be some will dig it some won't care too much for it see i didn't even know that i had these you've just told me this applies to like (laughs) gears like i played them all bought them all own them all you know these freebies that i've got i might have to go check them out (laughs) yeah exactly but uh yeah it's nice to have something for free and I suppose acknowledging that you've been some sort of time and effort into previous installments mm, yeah, games exactly. but yeah I, I, I don't know if we need it but it certainly doesn't hurt to feel that you're that you're appreciated for, for um, checking out the last one mm. yeah. don't know if that helped yeah no, I think that's, <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's, I, I think that's, it's that's all very subjective yeah. exactly right and it, it, yeah exactly it's, it's really about what 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 impact it has on you and what's important to you about about games in general probably so it's subjective yeah. to me yeah. because like the avatar i just want them to give us some hall of fame bodies to put in game that, yeah, that yes. would be pretty cool to be honest yeah, <laughs> yeah i would um about. if i had a real one like you do yeah i'd damn sure put one on my avatar as well so i can respect the hustle in that regard <laughs> Um, well, that pretty much brings us to the end of the show. Um, so uh, let's just go through the, uh, the wrap-up here. If you want to get in contact with us, you can email us at hello at realgamerscore.com or you can message us on Twitter at realgamerscore, uh, which Cameron mans. Uh, we've also got the Discord, uh, discord.io slash realgamerscore and Patreon, patreon.com slash realgamerscore, as we previously mentioned. Uh, and we also have... Uh, we also have... Uh, twitch uh which we're on at the moment real gamer score podcast which is uh basically basically uh if you want to watch the show live we do uh we do this uh live on every friday new zealand time usually about nine ish um which is about seven o'clock australian depending on guests and and depending on when we want to um you know what availability and all that sort of stuff i think i think Uh, how i'm going to try and work it is like maybe every second week we do a friday night every second week we do a saturday night a saturday morning and then we can just kind of fluctuate it Sounds good. Yeah. So, um, so the best place to keep in contact with us is on the Discord around when when we're going to be going live and that kind of stuff because we don't really have a set schedule and we're currently just doing the show on on here at the moment. Um, we might end up doing some streaming, um, yeah. which uh, but we'll, we'll 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 see how that goes. Um, I, I think uh, with it, I'm just going to chuck up random streams or whatever. Whether we end up getting review codes, uh, whether we want to hit something in Game Pass, or just want to have that level of community interaction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, so make sure you make sure you um you follow us on Twitch. Uh, we're trying to hit that fifty mark, uh, and so just let yeah, so yeah. we can let you know we can let you know when we're going live in the Discord, uh, and we'll just sort of we'll, we'll put up what we have and we'll do the podcast each week. Yeah. Uh, if you want to write in questions, best place to do that is is any of those channels. But uh, the Discord chat we have a set channel for questions, uh, and also in the chat here, 
uh, for Twitch so you can get your uh, question read out live on the show. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to be on the show, uh, get in contact with uh, with one Shadowless Edge here uh, or, or myself yeah. uh, if you need to on TA or Discord. Uh, and we'll just do a bit of sampling of your audio, talk to you about the equipment and stuff just to make sure it all matches up so we can you know, get the best quality show possible. Uh, and then we look at your uh, scheduling and that kind of stuff and get, get you in the queue. Um, if you want to get in contact with me for whatever reason, uh, you can find me on Neomaster on everything, True Achievements, Xbox, uh, Discord. Uh, if, you, if, if, if I could get the name, I'm probably on it. Uh, D- Cameron, where can we find you? Shadowless Edge on all the typical stuff, Xbox, uh, Twitter, uh, not Facebook, what? True Achievements, yeah, whatever. Uh, otherwise, Real Gamers Call uh, is the social community manager. Uh, yeah, just hit me up. Oh, and Discord, sorry. Sorry. And uh, Dame, what, you got to plug everything, mate. Be, be, be shameless. <laughs> shameless. Uh well, I'm primarily most active on Twitter at GamesOfDane815. It is the sort of hub for me that links to my website, GamesOfDane.com, which is pretty much at the moment just a review hub. So Games of Dane on Twitter and the website is pretty much just my reviews and little updates on my road to 1 million gamer score. Um, I'm on Facebook at Games of Dane. Well... And YouTube is Games of Dane, but that's a fairly empty a little pool of content for anyone dabbling in that uh, that arena right now. So Twitter at Games of Dane 815 is the best place to find me for sure. It has all my reviews, all my achievement completions. I like to make little, I don't know if either of you guys have seen them, little videos of just highlights of random clips from my completions, and I compile them with a little animation saying 100% achievement completion oh nice um, no, I haven't seen those I should check those out that sounds great they're, uh, they're pretty cool I made them use it myself um, yeah it's a vanity project Games of Dane it's, it's all about me my reviews my completions <laughs> what I'm doing so Twitter at Games of Dane 815 best place to go fantastic nice. alright well thank, th- thank you so much for being on the show Dan we really appreciate it uh, it, was, it was great having you on thanks and, for having me it's been good I- And I'm sure the audience will agree. Uh, And we will catch you guys next week. See you later.